Well, since they know what we are, there's no need to act civil anymore. Oh no! All three of them stare at you hungrily, their eyes glowing. Chow time. Uh oh. What should you do? Oh, god damn it. You know what? I'm gonna fight them. I can take them! I SAID I CAN TAKE THEM! How's it going everyone? My name is Lionel and welcome to Seven Bloody Nights. This is the extended demo release and I'm really excited to see what's changed with this. So hey, let's get right into it, shall we? Warning, this game includes Yandere's blood and gore. Talks about past suicide attempt, talks of past trauma, loss, murder, creepy dolls, slight adult fun time undertones. This game is for an adult audience only. Minors are not allowed to play this game. Blood oozes down from my lips, adding a touch of crimson to my pale countenance. I feed on your essence. I sate myself with your love. For what could be more endearing, more true, than a transference from one to another? Of life's very foundation, the fluid of being, as I suckle your neck so dear, drawing the milk of your sustenance, I infuse your life into my own. We bond together in eternal devotion, never to part, to love always, Alan Lauren. That's a beautiful poem, I believe. The rain pounds on the windshield, a relentless batter that makes the inside of your car sound like a drum. Your wipers struggle to work even at maximum speed, and your headlights are unable to illuminate the road very well. You curse under your breath as the car jolts from the bump in the road. I knew I should have double-checked to make sure I had my phone charger. Curse my inability to read maps! In your excitement in getting ready to go to AnimeCon, You've got to bring the most important item of all, your phone charger. So now your phone battery is dead. Not that it would have done much good anyway. There's no Wi-Fi or cellular reception. Heck, you can't even play any music. All you can get on the radio is static. You're alone out here. Okay, stay calm. So you're lost in the middle of a thunderstorm with no way of contacting anyone. The rain will eventually ease off soon. It can't possibly get any- Ah, fudge nuggets! Out of nowhere, a large white bat appears in front of the car. You spin the wheel frantically to avoid it. The car bumps and jolts as it bounces over the rocky roadside and crashes into a larger tree. Thankfully, you are unhurt. Shaken, but unhurt. What the heck was that bat? What's a large white bat doing out here? There aren't any zoos nearby. You took a deep breath, trying to calm yourself down. Right now, that wasn't important. What was important is that your car is completely busted. You took a hold of the key and twist, hoping that by some miracle it will still work. But that hope was dashed when the starter coughs and sputters and dies. The battery is dead. Meaning you are stuck out here, in the middle of the woods, during a thunderstorm, with no way for calling for help. You let out a long, irritated groan. Oh, great. This is wonderful. The nearest town is 20 miles away and there's no way I'm walking in this weather. Just as it seems, all hope was lost. A light appears in the distance. There's a house nearby. You quickly button up your coat and open the door. And I'll just ask you to use their phone call for a tow truck and find a hotel to stay at for the night. And I'll be back on the road to AnimeCon in no time. You slam the door, turn up the collar and set off for the house. As you get closer, you quickly notice that it wasn't a house, but an old mansion. Sheesh, it feels like I entered a horror movie. Now all I need is a wearable for vampire to show up. You climb through the creaking steps up to the front door. The rain is still pelting down, but an eerie silence hangs in the air. You notice that there is a bell pull hanging on the right. Uh huh. I know that a bell pull is a terrible idea. It's just going to kill me. But I'm going to do it anyway. You grab a hole of the bell cord and pull it. But instead of hearing any bells chiming, the door begins to shake violently. The door falls upon you, crushing you to death. <laughs> Pancake! Oh no! <laughs> Alright, let's, let's head on back. Alright, let's knock knock. You firmly knock on the door. For a moment, nothing happens. You're about to try again when the door creaks open. Hello? There is no response. Not wanting to be out in the rain for much longer, you step inside the mansion. It is dead quiet inside, and there was no one in sight. There has to be someone here. 
I saw a light in the window and the door couldn't have opened on its own. Suddenly, lightning strikes, lighting up the room for a brief moment. Gah! Look at what we have here. Hello there, Eros. You quickly turn to find yourself face to face with a handsome young man dressed in pastel goth attire. What caught your attention was his mesmerizing pink eyes. A cute little thief has broken into my house. Uh, no, I am not a thief. Of course you are. You already stolen something of mine. My heart. Oh. Oh, that was bad. Did he get that from some pickup line book? Look, I'm sorry to intrude, but my car broke down and I was hoping that I could use your phone. Oh, you poor thing. I'm so sorry to hear that. And you're soaking wet. How about you stay for the night? You can call for a tow truck tomorrow. The weather should be much nicer then. I don't want to be a burden. In all honesty, you weren't really all for sleeping in a strange house, no matter how handsome the owner is. Of course not. I would never forgive myself if I let someone as cute as you get hypothermia. And besides, it's always a pleasure to have visitors. We don't get to have guests over often. Well, if you insist. Thank you, Mr. Oh, forgive my manners. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Eros. What's your name, darling? It's Lionel. Oh, what a lovely name. He smiles at you as he gestures you over to the living room. Now, why don't you get some rest and I'll fix you up a something hot to drink. Before he can say another word, Eros has already left. You sit down on a comfy couch. You notice that there were a lot of cobwebs everywhere and it was also really dusty. Eros has returned and offers you a cup of coffee. I'll be honest, my dude, that does not look like a cup of coffee. Here you go. Darling. Oh, thank you. You noticed that he was holding a cup too, but the liquid was deep purplish red color. Eros soon takes notice of your stare. It's brandy. I don't drink coffee unless it has a lot of sugar in it. I don't like bitter things. You nodded. You drink the hot brew. The warmth seeps into you, making you feel drowsy. You start to relax around Eros. He didn't seem like he had any bad intention. And has been really nice to you so far. So, how did your car broke down? Well, I was on my way to Anime Con when I got lost on the way. Then suddenly, a giant white bat appeared in front of the car and it startled me. A giant white bat, you say? I know it sounds strange, but it's true. My, how peculiar. Well, I've been here for a long time and I've never seen any bats. Are you sure you didn't imagine it? Honestly, I'm not sure. Maybe I did imagine it. I have been driving all day with little brakes. I guess you could say you've gone a little... Betty. <laughs> you and Eros let out a small laugh. Suddenly, a realization dawns upon you. Say, earlier you said we. How many people live here? Oh, well, just me and my six brothers. You nearly almost spit out your coffee. Six brothers? Holy poo, imagine the pain the mother had to go through. <laughs> We're all adopted. Oh! That makes so much more sense. Yeah, but enough about me. Let's talk about you. Eros goes closer and gives you a half lidded smile. Eros, yes! Eros, my baby, yes! You know, I wasn't joking when I said you were cute. You feel your cheeks becoming warm. Well, thank you, Eros. As you stare back at Eros, you notice that his eyes look so warm, shimmering, pulsing with life. It was beautiful. Pink leaked into your mind, and you can hear Eros whisper it so soothingly that the tension in your muscles deflated. That's it. Try to relax. You can feel his hot breath against your neck. You're about to close your eyes when... Wham! You jerk back up. Eros had moved away from you, rubbing the back of his head as he grimaced in pain. Oh, what the? I'm trying to sleep. Take your food elsewhere. You look back up to where the voice came from and see a young man with dark blue hair lying lazily on a big chair, hugging a cat doll. He kind of resembled the prince. I guess he must be one of Eros's brothers. 
Wait, has he been here the whole time? I did not notice him before. Also, what did he just call me? Morpheus, I'm in the middle of something. Why are you even here? I was busy reading and I got comfortable, so I fell asleep. Ugh, you're so lazy. Your room isn't that far away. Just go there and sleep. Morpheus's attention falls to you, his deep ocean blue eyes staring into your soul. Your face. Eh? He is suddenly up close to your face. It's symmetrical. Uh, man, this, this feels like a reference of some sort that I completely forgot about. If I were to get a knife and cut it down the middle, I would get matching halves. Uh, thank you? What? Your face would be perfect for my latest doll. What? He reaches out to touch your face. Arrow snatches his hand before he could. Leave, Morpheus. Arrow attempts to shove Morpheus away. I saw them first. You haven't marked them yet, so I'm allowed to have my chance. I was going to, but then you threw a book at me. This is getting weird. While they were distracted, you quickly got up and tried to sneak away. But while you were backing up, you bump into something big and soft. Yo, my dude. Well, well, well. You turned over to see a large man wearing a black leather jacket. He was on the heavier side and looked to be older than the other two. Who the heck is this Elvis impersonator guy? Aren't you cute? He slid off his shades and gives you what you assume to be a flirtatious smirk. A pleasure to meet you, dollface. The name is Beelzebub, the one man army. Why is everyone in here? Why do they all have weird names? It's a good thing they're all hot, or else they would never get laid. Beelzebub grinned, showing off his white, sparkling teeth. Beelzebub would ask you if you want to come back to Beelzebub's place, but it looks like you're already here. Did he just talk in the third person? And may Beelzebub say. He steps closer to you. You look very sweet. But Beelzebub has a bite. Before you can reply, Eros comes in between you and Beelzebub. Hey, you got to last the half one. <laughs> hey, you got to have the last one. This one is mine. Beelzebub doesn't see any bite marks, so they're still free game. Eros lets out a cat-like hiss at Beelzebub, who just chuckles in response. And that's when you notice that Eros has fangs. Bat-like fangs. And his eyes are glowing red. Wait a second. Are you a vampire? Eros stares at you. Uh, no, of course not. Don't be silly. Yeah, he is. As a matter of fact, we all are. Morbius! What? We're gonna find out sooner or later. Honestly, I'm surprised it took them this long to figure it out. They're kind of dumb. Well, since they know what we are, there's no need to act civil anymore. Oh no! All three of them stare at you hungrily, their eyes glowing. Chow time. Uh-oh. What do you do? Oh, god damn it. You know what? I'm gonna fight them. I can take them! In a fight! Right? I said I can take them! Yeah, I'ma fight him. Take this! Kia! You run a Beelzebub and punch him in the gut. Ah! You grab your hand and rub it to ease the pain. What are you made of? Metal? Pfft, that was hilarious. We're vampires. We're much stronger than the average human. Did you really think that you can take on three vampires? <laughs> Beelzebub finds your attempt to fight amusing. But now it's time to eat. I call dibs on the legs. What? No fair. The legs are the best sport. You let out blood curling scream as the three vampires drink you dry. It end too. Well, what did you expect? <laughs> oh man, let's let's hit on back. Let's hit on back. Okay, let's try to get out of the house. I know this is another dead end, but whatever. Oh, look at the time. Better get going. Bye. You quickly book it out of there and hit it straight back towards the front door. But before you could even grab the doorknob, Eros has already grabbed you from behind, preventing you from moving. You're not going anywhere, darling. How did you caught me so fast? Didn't you know? Vampires are way faster than humans. Crap muffins! You let out scream as Eros sinks his teeth into your neck. Dead end three. You're too slow. 
Oh my god, this is just adorable. I freaking love this. Oh, uh, all right, let's head on back. All right, quick, distract them and then book it. Without thinking, you run up to Eros and rub your hands through his hair, messing it up. He quickly pushes you away. Hey, stop that. Duh, my hair. This took hours for me to get right. He clings onto Morpheus as he balls his eyes out. Get off me, you idiot! <laughs> Stop laughing and help me! I can't believe that actually worked. Okay, now's my chance to get out of here. You quickly race back to the front door, but when you turn the doorknob, it wouldn't budge. It was locked. Ah, poo. Looks like I have to find another way out. You run down the hallway, and as you do, you can hear three vampires from before. You can run, but you can't hide. My poor hair! Ruined! Ah, stop being a baby and help us find the human! I'm not going anywhere until I can fix my hair! As you reach the end of the hallway, you come across three doors. Ah, fudge nuggets. Which one do I choose? Three doors?! Oh god! Okay, you know what? Uh, let's go left, because why not? You enter through the left door. You fail to notice the lack of flooring beneath you. You fall to your death. <laughs> Oh god, that is just atrocious. <laughs> Alright, let's go back. Alright, let's go down the middle first. You enter through the middle door. You enter a room that is made of soft cushions. There were what looked to be torn up dog toys scattered across the floor, and the walls had large tears in them. There was also a large dog bowl with the name Fluffy printed on it. Huh, guess they have a pet dog. Suddenly, you hear a loud growl. A giant wolf appears before you! That's the cutest wolf I've ever seen! Nice, doggy? The wolf pounces on you, tearing you to shreds. Dead end <laughs> Dog food! Oh no! <laughs> alright, alright, let's head on back. Alright, let's go to the right. You enter through the door to the right. You enter through another corridor. There has to be an exit around here somewhere. Just how big is this place? You look behind your shoulder to see if the three vampires were nearby. Suddenly, you bump into something hard. Ooh, woo! What is this bullshit? No, no. You fall to the ground, landing on your butt. Yow! What did I bump into? A brick wall? You look up to see a large man dressed in gothic punk attire. Who are you? He bared his sharp fangs at you. Oh man, not another vampire. And why is he hot as well? Are you a vampire hunter? No. How did you get in here? I... It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're a trespasser. And I don't like trespassers. And unfortunately for you, I'm starving. I really wish he didn't talk so loudly. Oh, wait. Oh, Pooh, he's gonna eat me. I need to think of something. Uh... Uh... Hey, is that another human over there? Looks like they're escaping. You better go catch them. Why did I think that would work? Of course it wouldn't. What? Where? Where did they go? Holy poo. He actually believes it. Uh, they went in that door. Come back, you human. I'm coming for you. L the large man leaves to go find the other human. Just as you think you were safe, you heard the voice of the other three vampires getting louder. Poo. I need a place to hide. You spawn open door and quickly go inside the room, shutting the door behind you. As you turn around, you notice that... You were in someone's bedroom. Oh my god, there's so many references. I love this. Oh gosh. The walls are covered in video game posters and there are plushies everywhere. You look over to see a tall lanky man dressed in gothic emo attire. He's sitting on a bed, playing on a game man console. Ah, fudge nuggets. How many vampires are there in this house? Uh, I don't think he's noticed me yet. Maybe I can sneak out. Just as you were about to turn around, you hear a squeaky toy noise. You look down to see that you've stepped on a plush toy. Ah, fudge muskets. I'm busy! You look back up to the tall man. He let out an annoyed sigh. I'm on the final bus, so buzz off! As the tall man looks up, his eyes go wide and he drops the game. You, you're... Uh, this is it. I'm dead. I'm so dead. You're adorable! Ah? Uh? He quickly rushes over to you and squishes your face. Oh, look at you! You're the cutest thing I've ever seen! I'm gonna make you my new best friend. Ah? Uh, best friend? Yep. 
My name's Phtonis. What's your name? Uh, I'm Lionel. Maybe I can use him to get me out of here. Say, a uh, new best friend. You want to go and hang out somewhere? Sure. Where do you want to go? Oh, d d oh, 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 no. Just then, the large man from before comes barging in. Oi, Phtonis. Hand over the human. Help me find the other human. The other one is a real sneaky one. I can't find him anywhere. What? No way. They're my new friend. Back up, Ares. I said, hand him over. No way. They're mine. Petonis wraps his arms around you and he uses his body as a shield. Can this get any worse? What's with all the yelling in here? I just had to say it. Eros takes notice of you and smiles. Oh, Donus, you captured the human. Great, now please, hand him over. Donus shakes his head. No way! They're mine! 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 Oh, no. Eros lets out an annoyed sigh. You're not gonna make them your pet, are you? You know they never last long. Wait, what? They're not a pet! They're my friend! And I'll make sure to take good care of this one! Donus hugs you even tighter. Can't breathe! You're already about to kill him. I'm gonna struggle, because I know the other ones are gonna lead me to a dead end. No thank you. You squirm around and even try to kick Donus to escape. He soon takes notice of this and lets you go. As soon as you are out of his grasp, you book it out of there, leaving the three vampires behind. And there they go again. You idiot! Why did you let the human escape? They needed to breathe, Ares. Your legs begin to ache. I can't keep running forever. I need to find a way out and fast. You start to lose hope when you notice a glow in the distance. It's an exit sign. Ah, the exit. You run even faster towards it. Wait a second. Mansions don't have exit signs. Before you knew it, you were suddenly up in the air, hung upside down by a rope. Wow. Just wow. A man emerges from the darkness. He is dressed up in a techno-punk attire. I think you're the first person to ever fall for that. And most would easily recognize that this is a trap, but... He chuckles. You actually fell for it. You're a special kind of stupid, aren't you? That's cute. Your cheeks heat up in embarrassment. He smirks. His eyes travel up and down your body. Name's Mammon. What's your name, bunny? It's, uh, Lionel. Charmed. I'd love to take you back to my lab. You would make the perfect cute little guinea pig. The way he stares at you makes you shiver. You really don't want to know what kind of experiments he has in mind. But Hubris wants to talk to you. Who's Hubris? Instead of answering your question, Mammon cuts rope. You drop to the ground and hit your head. Knock you out instantly. Sometime later, you wake up. Your head is throbbing in pain. You try to move, but you're tied down to a chair. You hear the six vampires arguing with each other. Come on, just a little bite. Beelzebub is hungry. Just their scent alone is making Beelzebub go mad. No can do, big guy. We don't do anything until Hubris say so. I hope Hubris will let me have their face. It's perfect for what my latest doll needs. Well, he better get here quick. I still need to find that other human. Ares, there is no other human. Oh, I uh, knew that. Ugh, my perfect hair, ruined. This wouldn't have happened if you guys just let me have the human. Come down, you big baby. I'll help you fix it later. Well, I hope Hubris will let me keep them. I even made a friendship bracelet for them. No offense, String Bean, but I don't think Hubris is going to let you keep them. You're a terrible pet owner. Also, that's not a bracelet. That's a collar. Don't call me String Bean! They're not a pet! They're my friend! My friends would have lived longer if you guys didn't drain all their blood when I'm not looking. Hmm, true. But most of the deaths were caused by you. Remember that one time when you took your previous best friend kite flying? During a thunderstorm? Don't remind me! I'm, st I'm still trying to find all their pieces. Is it really my fault I forgot humans get killed by lightning? Uh, excuse me. They all stop talking and turn to look at you. Uh, listen, I'm really sorry for trespassing at all. Uh, how about you guys just let me go when I never come back? Deal? 
No can do, Bunny. That's Hubris's decision. Suddenly there's a loud creaking noise. Speak of the devil, here he is now. A man in elegant Victorian clothing enters the room. He was much older looking than the rest and had an aura of dominance. He walks up to you, staring you down. How did you find this place? Uh, my car broke down and I noticed a light coming from your window, so I came here for help. Does anyone else know you're here? I'll, uh... Let's tell him the truth, I guess. N yeah. No, no one knows I'm here. Hubris looks over to Mamon. They're telling the truth. W what? How did you know? I can read minds, Bunny. Special vampire ability. Well then, we can go ahead and dispose of them. Wait, what? Wait, please, don't kill me! I'll do anything! Streams of tears runs down your cheeks. Hubris stares down at you. Anything? Yes. Hubris ponders for a moment. Very well. The other six look at Hubris in shock. Wait, seriously? Well, this got interesting. I'll allow you to live on one condition. You must clean this entire mansion before one week is up. If you succeed, I'll let you go. Fail, and you'll have all your blood drained. You want me to be a cleaner? Yes. As you can see, this entire mansion is filthy. Because a certain six are too lazy to clean it. Hubris glares daggers at the other six, who awkwardly avert their gazes. And I have been having trouble finding someone else who would do it for me. So, do we have a deal? I don't have much of a choice, do I? No. Unless you want to go ahead and be ripped to shreds. Where's the uniform at? Hubris snaps his fingers, and the rope binding you disappears. Follow me. Hey, it's me, the creator. Thank you so much for playing my game. I hope that you had fun. Night 1 for Eros, Morpheus, and Beelzebub will hopefully come out in February. Again, thank you for playing, and have a great day or night. Bye! Alright, so that was 7 Bloody Nights. They did add a couple new scenes, they updated a lot of the sprites, and it seems the engine has been changed as well, so hey, we might be able to expect uh, more content coming up real soon. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game is in the description below, and please do abide by the author's wishes. Miners, please do not interact with the game, okay? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lionel, signing off. Ciao!